Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ben Rollins Blueprint Podcast. I'm your host, Ben Rollins. I want them. But before we start today's episode, I want to take a moment, just take some time to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year in advance. And I just want to thank you. I want to thank everybody who has been supportive of Ben Rollins Blueprint, who have been there from the start and is still there today, just trying to support us in one way or the other, liking our videos subscribe to our channel, sharing our episodes to your loved ones. I just want to thank you. And I hope that this Christmas is going to be a success for you and your family. Enjoy and make sure, like, when you're sitting in the table with your family members, ask, one, ask your brother or your sister, your cousin, your aunt or your mom that, hey, there's someone called Ben Rollins and there's a channel called Ben Rollins Blueprint and it's so important for us to watch or learn some things from Ben Rollins Blueprint. Okay, make sure you share, like, and subscribe to Ben Rollins Blueprint. And just, I just want to let you know that next year is going to be exciting. And you just see how we've started and everything is good. Just imagine what is coming next year. Amen. So Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year in advance. Enjoy with your family. So today is going to be a great episode because I have somebody we will consider a great guy. <laughs> Try to be. <laughs> um, He's, 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 he was a manager. He was a, a manager at Amazon, and now he's an operation manager at Target. He, he got a master's degree. He's from Tacoma Park, Maryland, and he's no other person than Mr. Edric Sharp. Hey, Mr. Edric, how you doing today? Doing good. Thank you for having me, man. This is really special. I appreciate it, man. For nothing, man. The pleasure's all mine. How you doing today? Doing good, bro. Uh... I had to work yesterday. Uh, I'm off for the next three days, so you know it, it, it's turn up time. So luckily, you got me before I'm probably somewhere drunk as hell, you know, having fun <laughs> shit like that. But appreciate you for having me here, boss. Oh, for nothing. I just want to say this to everyone watching right now. For those Amazon folks who are like, "Hey, I want to hear from Edric. Why do you leave Amazon? Be patient. Just hang on to a second. Enjoy it to the end, and you're gonna get some cracker." Oh, so coming back to you, Mr. Edric, how, how is life like in Target? Uh, it's really good. It's really good. Um, it's something different. Um, I think that, you know, with industry that I'm in, uh, food distribution, Target, it's a new thing. So mm -hmm. um, it's funny because it's like, you know, a lot of people hit me like, how is Target? You know, my prior Amazon people, uh, prior Amazon managers, not even just a manager, some of the associates, uh, you know, they've been hitting me up like, how is Target? And I'm telling them it's great. Like, it's great. It's not everything. Is, nothing is perfect, but it's really great when it comes to, like, growth, um, opportunities, and just, like, development of you as a person and not only a person, but, like, as a manager. Um, I know that, you know, the the technology, well, when I would say the system is not as good as Amazon, you know, Amazon's a trillion dollar company. They got AWS. So it's, it's, it's way different. Like, you know, Amazon is in 2050 target when it comes to as far as like the systematic is more so 2000, 2010, maybe. So, you know, Amazon is definitely there when it comes to the system. But Target is just a lot of opportunities. With so I'm in the food distribution. Um, I have a team of about like 50 people. So I was Amazon. You know, mm -hmm. I have anywhere between 100 to 150 people. Yeah. And you know, everybody's on station. It's a little different in Target. It's uh more of manual labor. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, it's just so much growth. So the one that I met is the first one to actually be manually, um, food distribution. So in other uh, states, it's it's um. Uh, it's all it's automated. So they're spending millions of dollars to push out these products. Mm -hmm. And some some millionaire, billionaire, whatever was like, hey, we're spending too much money doing this thing automated. Why don't we actually bring in manual labor? And uh Target, the one that I'm at, is actually the first one. And they have three new ones that's launching in Sacramento, Connecticut, and Colorado. Wow. So it's like we're the 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 stepping stone for the manual food distribution mm -hmm. and there's a lot of opportunities there so a lot of people as I'm getting in there you got people getting promoted within six months you mm -hmm. got people getting promoted within a year because they're the foundation and these new startups not only are they paying people a lot of money to to come in and start that up mm -hmm. but they're getting promoted as well so it's like if you get the opportunity try to get there um, you know I'm not trying to be a lobbyist about it but the thing is that I'm happy that I'm there because 
it, it, sky is the limit. Like right now, I'm an operations manager, but two years from now, it is probably going to require travel because, you know, they're going to start opening them up. There's only six in the United States, like I said, mm-hmm. um, but there's only one that's manual and they're opening three more. So it'll be nine. So six of them are automated. Three of them will be manual. And um, yeah, I mean, people as I'm coming in, we got people leaving out and they getting promoted. And now they're seniors, some of the GMs. So, you know, it, it's it's it's. It's, it's, it's on an up and rising right now, bro. Man, I like that. But before we go, get into why you left Amazon and some other stuff, I just want to kind of understand. I want the audience to know who Idrick is. So I want us to move back to like your childhood. How was it like growing up? Um, Okay. Uh, childhood was, was cool. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I when I was young, I was raised by my grandparents mm-hmm. uh, in Tacoma Park. Um. My mother was there. Um, not never would discredit my mother. My mother just had to work crazy hours, and she didn't want me to be raised in PG. Uh, she worked majority throughout the day, so she worked from like three to like twelve, mm-hmm. and those is cutting up hours. So, mm-hmm. you know, they thought about it. They they put it together. It's like, nah, we're not gonna put him in that situation where when he get off of school for the until midnight, he's by himself. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, they I started living with my grandparents in Tacoma mm-hmm. Park, and uh. They did a great job of raising me. I'm not perfect, mm-hmm. but uh, they did a great job of raising me. So I was, you know, started up with my grandmother, my grandfather. My mother was there. Father was in and out. Um, by the way, my father has the same name as me. His father has the same name as me. Mm-hmm. And his father has the same name as me. So technically, I'm like the fourth. <laughs> I could be the fifth or the tenth. I don't know. I really don't know. But, you know, if I do have a son, you know what he's going to be named. He's going to be named Adric. So, uh-huh. um. You know, that's a little bit about my background, um, you know, raised in Tacoma Park, went to all the Tacoma Park schools, uh, Tacoma Park Elementary, Piney Branch, Tacoma Middle, and then I went to Northwood. Um, you know, Tacoma Park is an area where it's, you know, it's PG, Montgomery County, and D.C., so it's mm-hmm. like kind of like the best of three worlds. Yeah. And I was just um, blessed enough to be in that middle, not, you know, going off too much into the D.C. life, too much mm-hmm. into the PG life. My people put me in Montgomery County schools, Mm -hmm. which kind of like was like the more safer uh, part. Um, So I appreciate them for that. But I mean, just being raised in Tacoma Park, you get the best of both worlds, you know, as far as the street life, the smart life, uh, you know, a lot of different uh, diverse type of people in in that area. So, um, you know, that had a lot to do with like me being raised because, you know, it's a lot of different paths I could have went down, but luckily, you know, my grandmother, she was on my she was on my tail, bro. She was on my tail. Like if I crossed the street and somebody was like, Yeah, I seen your grandson crossing the street. I remember I'll never forget I got beat. She beat me with a with a freaking remote because she had heard I had crossed this big street, New Hampshire Avenue, if you know what New Hampshire Avenue is. Uh-huh. Yeah, I crossed New Hampshire Avenue when I wasn't supposed to. And somebody rolled past, told my grandmother I came in the house. She was just staring at me like so what did you do today? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I was just playing basketball. This is like, where did you go today? I'm like, I came straight here. She's like, so you didn't go to Wendy's? I'm like, nah. Boom, she hit me up there. Like, yo, it was crazy. Um, so yeah, my grandmother was really strict on me, but you know, she also wanted me to have like a, a, a fairly good childhood. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I'm happy that she raised me because if she hadn't raised me, I probably would be somewhere differently. I probably wouldn't have the 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 morals and all of that shit that I have now. But um, so I mean, I call her my angel every time I talk to her. I, I call her my angel. Sometimes I'm not gonna lie, I, I fucking cry. Am I allowed to cuss? No, you you cool, you cool. You sure? Yeah, you cool. Okay, yeah. I mean, sometimes I literally tear up talking to her because I mean, she's just been so impactful and influential to my to my upbringing and like who where I am now mm-hmm. is literally because of her so um sometimes I get a little emotional when I talk to her and she's getting older um but yeah you know um went to you know elementary middle school and then I went to Hampton University mm-hmm. uh shout out Hampton I, I wasn't the biggest like college enthusiast but like you know college was cool I, college was great college mm-hmm. was almost unreal college was almost like fake uh that's how crazy it was Mm -hmm. um yeah hampton uh gave me taught me a lot i went through a lot of trials and tribulations in hampton um if it does if we do get to that point i'll bring that up but um Mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's that's who i am now um 
I worked for I was in a government after I left Hampton for a while and then and then Amazon uh, and then I was unemployed for about two years mm-hmm. and uh that was very very rough for me very rough for me um I was doing a lot of things that I was supposed to to keep myself afloat and then I got the opportunity to work for Amazon and that's kind of like where my life just took a took a skyrocketed yeah I got you um, I want to ask you about when you were growing up in that situation, like growing up with your grandma, and what was what was your life's dream? What was your aspiration in life? What do you want to become when you grow up? That's a very good question because when I was being raised by my grandmother, um, she was hard on me and being on the books, mm-hmm. um, kind of like that uh, author, alt, uh, how you say it, author. Uh, authoritarian whatever oh, the word authoritarian. is yeah authoritarian whatever mm-hmm. um yeah she was kind of like that but i knew that she meant the best mm-hmm. um yeah i mean she she did a good job of raising me was really strict sometimes i felt like i couldn't do what i wanted to do so that mm-hmm. kind of like when i got to college i started cutting up mm-hmm. um but you know being raised by her it, it was great you know she she rewarded me off of my success so mm-hmm. i knew when i was you know everything i did good in school i was going to be rewarded so i kind of took it like that um and you know a lot of times where i probably could have strayed off into some bull crap mm-hmm. she made sure that she kept me you know closed in where like i wouldn't really have those opportunities of course in high school as you get older you just you, you know they let you branch out a little bit but i mean you know she 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 did a really good job bro like she did a perfect job bro cuz if it wasn't for her i'd probably be some street dude rather successful or some street dude in a ditch or some street dude that's on the run I, who knows who knows mm-hmm. but um yeah she kept me pretty pretty grounded she kept me pretty grounded so you never had anything you wanted to become growing up as a kid no aspiration i never case. really thought about it because yeah. i just wanted to like be a good good boy like i wanted to just make make sure i was successful you know i wanted to play basketball you mm-hmm. know at that time i wanted i was in the sports but i never was had the opportunity to really be in the sports my grandmother kind of kept me cir- circled in so it's like yeah i would play basketball football and that stuff in the streets but like i never really had the opportunity to play like in leagues and stuff like that yeah i played basketball you know for uh for my high school and 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 football for my high school but I was good in it. I was good like playing street basketball, mm-hmm. uh, uh, street football. I had never known what it's like to be in an organized situation of, uh, you know, like playing the league. So, you know, I wasn't really too good at those when it came to like organize anything, you know. So, I mean, I mean if anybody who's watching who knows, like, yeah, in the streets, I could cook you. But if it was in a game where it was organized, like, I'm over here, like, what the hell is going on? Like, like, I'm over here looking like trash for real, for real. So, you know, um, you know, I, that's all I really was into. Like, like I was a real big on sports, real big on rapping and all of that stuff, which I ended up, you know, I probably I made a big ass mistake. I should have I should still be rapping right now. I should probably be rich with my boy in in, in California <laughs> rapping right now, probably with Lil Wayne or somebody signing somebody. But, you know, uh, you know, I took advantage of that because I just you know, I, I just wanted to be successful. Like, I didn't care about anything else. I didn't want to be mm-hmm. anything specific, but just successful and make my grandmother proud. Mm-hmm. And um, for a lot of years prior to where I'm at now, I wasn't making her proud, which kind of like messed with me a lot mentally, like messed with me a lot mentally where I was getting into things that I shouldn't have. I was doing things that I shouldn't have. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I just got to thank God that like I was raised the right way. And I think that he seen the potential that I had and started to open up some paths and was like, look, you need to go through these doors. Mm-hmm. If you don't, I don't know what I can do for you. So not really a religious guy, but mm-hmm. I do thank God and my grandmother for getting me to where I'm at right now. Got you, got you. That's that's really great, man. Just hearing your story kind of inspired me a little bit. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I want to get to something. You know, when you go to college and when you, you come out from, when you go, um, graduate from college, you have this perception that, oh, I'm going to have a job or something like that. Yeah. So when you got out and you were unemployed, how was life treating you and what were some of the challenges you faced that made you Mr. Adric today? All right. So now here's what's about to get interesting. Uh-huh. Uh, so going into college was very new for me. Um, I didn't get into the college that I wanted to, mm-hmm. but I ended up uh, going to the college that I'm so grateful that I went to. Uh 
how it started was I wanted to go to Tulane and um and they told me that they didn't decline me, but they was like, uh, oh, you didn't make the you didn't make the cut this this go around. And I'm mm. just like, what the hell? Like I'm averaging a 3.6 GPA. Like, how? Like, like it didn't make any sense to me. Mm. So um I heard about Hampton and then I went on the tour. Mm. Oh my God, bro. And if you know me, I'm very big with females. I love females. Um, the female species is just <laughs> incredible to me. Like, it's nothing like a nothing like a good female. Uh, but <laughs> I, I, I went to Hampton uh, for a tour, and I looked around, and I'm like, "What the hell, bro? It was so many females there." And I'm like, "You know what? Sign me up." Uh-huh. Like, I'm like, "I don't care what I got to pay. I don't care what I got to do. Sign me up." And they was like, "The ratio is like." 13 to 16 to 1. I said, huh? They said, yeah, the ratio is, that means for one male, mm-hmm. there was 13 to 16 females. I said, yeah, <laughs> I already know where I'm going. And when I got to Hampton, there was a lot of people who said, that's how they sold you. Hampton think they slick. That's how they sell you. They're like, oh, yeah, home out of sea. It's prestigious, HBCU. But it's really the females that they get you with. Because when they when you go there as a male, they're like, oh, yeah, they, you know, it, Ratio this and that, and then you know, if you you a real one, you like, huh? Like I can go to college, uh, prestigious HBCU, and the females is everywhere. Cool, sign me up. So that's how that happened. Um, mm-hmm. when I got there, um, my freshman year, I was really to myself. Um, you know, started meeting some DC dudes, some Baltimore dudes. Um, and then that's when I went into my sophomore year, and that's when I got my first um, I got my first crib to myself. So it's like I was with my grandmother who was very strict on me, but, like, as I started getting older, she realized, like, all right, I'm raising a good man. Like, I branch out. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. smart about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I branch out. I was cutting up a lot. But the thing is, she didn't know. Um, so, you know, I go to college, and then, you know, freshman year, I'm uh, in the dorm, and then sophomore year is when I got my own crib. And that, I think, started my adult life because then I had real responsibilities, had to, you know, pay for everything, had mm-hmm. to do things by myself. Um, but also that's kind of like where my life took a turn. That's where I started experiencing some things that I never experienced, like, you know, drugs and drinking and, you know, actually like females like at a uh, like literally in front of me. Like it's not like you had to chase them. They're right there. Mm-hmm. So um, sophomore year was a bit of a struggle because I was really like, you know, if you're a secluded person and, you know, you do little things to try to branch out and you do little sneaky things. And now it's like you could do whatever the hell you want. It was like I had to like be disciplined and that was kind of a struggle so my sophomore year was was a struggle um and then I got into my junior year um and then you know that's when I had to like reel myself in and I kind of knew what I was doing Mm -hmm. um and in my junior year um a lot of uh you know everything was on uprising you know I was that dude but I wasn't that dude I was never one of those guys that wanted to be popular but I had some some friends that were real popular and I had, you know, basketball players, they seen that I was doing, they seen, you know, you got the girls, you got this and that. And a lot of people, when they see what you're doing, they want to be a part of that. They want to like have something to do with that. So it's like, that's how I started getting known and started getting recognized and started being kind of somewhat popping in Hampton. I wouldn't say I was a popular person. Some people probably would say I was, I don't know. I don't really care, but um, that's how that started. And then again, it took another loop. So, you know, at this point, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I'm in school, but I'm doing things I'm not supposed to. Um, I'm like, feel like the king of the world. And um, yeah, it it was some things that, you know, one thing that people don't know about, and this might be a first for a lot of people, if you're my good friend, you know, I got expelled from college, bro. What? My senior year. Why? Um, It was a party. Mm -hmm. And there was a fight between a guy and a girl. Uh-huh. And I was around, and I was drunk, and I was lit, and I was having fun, and everybody seen me. The guy who got into a fight with the girl, mm-hmm. he got approached by the police, and um, he basically made a statement saying that it wasn't me, it was Adric. And at this time, Twitter was really popping. Um, I, I had a, a Twitter. It was called Sex So Good. Um, it's a go-go song, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. But, like, I had a Twitter that was really popping, like, if I hadn't gone through that situation, I think I probably would have been Twitter famous. Like I would like I had a lot of like I had multiple times where like certain things I would tweet would go not would say viral, but thousands of views, thousands of retweets, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I used to always be on the Twitter. So when that shit happened, when I'm there, I'm sitting over here like instigating it and I'm telling the joke like I was fighting a girl. 
Like, like, so the guy was fighting the girl, but I'm telling the joke. Like, yeah, you know, again, she was kind of a bigger woman. No disrespect. Big women need love, too. I love big women. Um, you know, they can, you know, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so how it happened was is that I started tweeting about it or whatever, and I was just making a joke of it. It got really big. Like, a lot of people was laughing at it. A lot of people was, like, inter- interacting with it. So the guy who actually went through it, mm-hmm. He got approached by the police. He was almost about to go to jail or some stuff like that. And 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 Hampton had approached him, like the 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 vice, you know, the the those head people, mm-hmm. they approached him about it and was like, yo, you're gonna get expelled. This and that. He's like, No, it's not me. It was Adric who did that. If you don't believe me, look at his tweets. So Hampton investigated my tweets. I get called up to the office and on paper they have all of my tweets. Wow. And they're like, we don't conduct this, this foul language. You're talking about your fighting women, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, hold on. I was just telling a joke. I didn't even get a chance to say that. They sent me to, I think her name was like Dr. Emmons or something like that. And everybody knew, you go to Dr. Emmons' office, you're done. Mm -hmm. And I got sent to Dr. Emmons' office. And she was just so cold with me. She didn't even want to hear anything that I had to say. She didn't want to hear anything I had to say. I actually have that conversation recorded on my phone Mm -hmm. because I was like, yo, I'm being framed. Um, And I ended up getting expelled, bro. And what I had to do is is that, and this is my senior year, and what I had to do is I had to literally be my own lawyer, investigator, voucher. That was was probably the top number one most depressed, uh, number one or number two most depressing time of my life, bro. Mm -hmm. Like I'm at my senior year, I'm, you know, I'm successful. I'm about to graduate. Um, I know I'm about to work for FDIC, the federal government, and all of that stuff. And I get fuck, I get fucking expelled for something that I had nothing to do, but I was being immature, trying to, you know, do this Twitter thing, trying to get Twitter famous. Mm-hmm. And it ended up screwing me, bro. It ended up screwing me. Pause. Um, and yeah, that was that was a rough time, bro. Um, I was probably expelled for like three months, and I ended up having to get statements from security. I had to go to the establishment where we was at. I had to get a uh, camera footage. I had to do a lot of things to show them like, yo, cause it, cause they say you can appeal it. Mm-hmm. So three weeks or two weeks into being a part of the appealment and all of that stuff, I had to figure out all this stuff by myself while I'm depressed. So I proved it to them. Mm-hmm. They ended up taking me back, which they never take people back. If you get expelled, they never take you back. But I got lucky and I did the right things to show that my innocence and that motherfucker who 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 snitched on me mm-hmm. and who framed me still was at the school. It was very hard for me. And the guys that I was with, I was around some I was around some Baltimore guys. And the thing is Hampton, Hampton had people, Hampton had some re- real street dudes. Mm-hmm. Had some real, real dudes. <clears throat> and it was very hard for me to to not to not hurt that guy. Mm-hmm. Um and seeing him, knowing what he did. Um but you know, I took the higher route and I just, you know, I was like weeks behind in class, almost a month behind in class. And I had to like make up everything. And it was just crazy. Um, You know, it, it was just crazy, bro. It was crazy. Wow. So after when you were done with college, what was your next move? After I was done with college, um, I started working for the federal government. I was with FDIC for about six years. Mm-hmm. I was, yeah, I was with FDIC for about six years and then I realized it like, mm, it was cool, but that's not where the real money was at. Mm-hmm. And then I tried to branch out. And when I tried to branch out, um, it was a struggle. You know, I was working for temp agencies and stuff like that. And then it got to the point where I didn't have a job at all. Like the temp, it was contracts. He was only working for a couple of, for months or for maybe a year or so. And then it's like, damn, what do you do? Uh, so then I tried to get into my master's. Oh, I didn't even bring that up. So after I left, Hampton, I started going for my master's. So mm-hmm. I'm in school trying to get my master's and I'm struggling to keep a legitimate job because the federal government, they had me as an intern. I'm getting intern money. Like you have to do so many years and I'm, you know, I'm trying to be on my own. Like I'm not making this enough money that I need and I'm, and I have to pay for school and all of that stuff. So it was a bit of a struggle for that time. So I, I tried to, to branch out and, and, and do things without FDIC and it ended up shooting me in the foot. Mm-hmm. Do I still wish I worked for FDIC right now? No, mm-hmm. because you know it's federal government, a lot of good benefits, security, and all of that stuff. But the growth is not what what I was looking for, so that's why I tried to to branch out. 
Um, and, you know, uh, those two years that I went uh, with no job was what made and break me. Mm-hmm. Um, I was doing things that I was not supposed to do, bro. Um, and I can, and I'm speaking on this. I don't do this no more. Mm-hmm. I'm a whole new person, you know, but, you know, you know, I was selling drugs and all of that stuff. I was, you know, living a lifestyle that I never thought that I would live when I was raised by my grandmother, my, mm-hmm. my, my, my grandparents. And, and to be honest, it kind of started from, from Hampton, you know, Hampton was cool, this and that, everybody smoke, everybody drink. And then you're like, oh, I can make money off of this, this and that. Um, and you know, it was cool. Like I was very smart about it, but the thing is that like, it's, that's what started me once I, once I got out of college, I'm like, yeah, I used to sell drugs. Like that shit was easy. Like Mm -hmm. I don't have no job right now. So this is going to keep me afloat until I get to where I I need to. So I got my master's and all that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting over here applying to jobs and like all of it is like specialized stuff. Like you got to be specializing. And it's like, it took so long for me to actually, I still never, that's why I ended up going with Amazon because I'm like, yo, I got government background. Yeah. I'm not specializing in anything. I got my master's. Why the hell won't anybody hire me? And this shit was just like very depressing. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I went to, you know, what I kind of learned. So, you know, selling drugs, uh, and that kept me afloat. Um, was living with my mother, how I hid that from my mother. I have no clue. I have no clue. Um, did she know? Maybe. I don't know. But I just told her that I had a lot of money that I saved up because everybody, I mean, if you know me, I'm re- very good with my money. Always had money. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I guess she was looking the other way or maybe she really didn't believe that I could be doing that. But yeah, for like two years, bro, I was selling pounds and and, and lean and, 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 you know, just, you know, doing things I wasn't supposed to do. I look back at it and, and yeah, I'm ashamed of myself, but at the same time, it built me to be who I am now because now I don't have nothing to do with none of that shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't smoke. I don't do none of that shit. I do drink, of course, obviously, mm-hmm. but I mean, that's the only, that's the, the most extent that I'll get to. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a struggle. It was a bit of a struggle, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, we here now, bro. So what, what made you stop um, the business you were doing? Well, there's two things. Mm-hmm. The first one was that, um, and this is a story that nobody knows about it unless you were like, unless you were like really in my close circle. Mm-hmm. When I got expelled from school, the first day that I got enrolled back, and I know this is going to sound crazy as hell. Mm-hmm. The first day that I got enrolled back in school, I was messing with this girl and she told me, she said that, um, her best friend's boyfriend keeps sending weed to her to her house. And she's like, he's sitting over here sending all this weed in my house and I'm not getting paid for nothing. And I told her, I'm like, take that shit. I'll take care of it. Like, take that shit. And I didn't think she was going to do it. This was the first day that I got back. And we had a big celebration. Everybody, We had a big party and all of that. I hadn't messed with this girl in a very long time uh, since like freshman year. And I've been wanting her for forever, but I, we kind of messed around, but I never really had her. Um, but, like, you know, it's like, Adric's back. Like, Adric, you know, he got enrolled back, like this and that, da-da-da. So I ended up messing with her that night. Um, and then we, she wakes up in the morning, and she's like, yeah, he got some, he got a shipment that's going to get sent, this and that, da-da-da. I think it's like a pound or whatever. Um, yeah, I should take it. I said, take it, and I'll take care of it. I don't know what the hell I was thinking, bro. Mm-hmm. You just got back into school. I don't, that's what I'm saying. Like, I was young. I was dumb. I was stupid, bro. Like, I didn't, I, like, I look back at it like, how the hell was I that stupid? But, you know, at the end, I'm like, I'm just happy I went through it, and it, and it happened, uh, and, 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 and I, I got success off of it. So the next day, bro, she's like, yeah, I should take it. This is in the morning, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, you should take that shit, da, 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 da. And then four or five hours later, I'm at my boy's house. And she's like, I got the package. I got it. This and that word. <laughs> she's like, I got the package. I got the package. Where are you at? I'm like, bring that shit over here. Bring that shit over here. Like like I said, I was like little in the game. I wasn't really doing too much drug, drug dealing, none of that. I was just like slightly or whatever. Um, you know, I'm a school guy. Um, but I, I dibble dabble. Um, so, yeah, she brings the shit over, dude. It was five pounds, dude. It was five fucking pounds, dude. And me and my boy, as we opened it, we like, what 
the hell? Like, no. Now we're scared. We're like, oh, no. Like, we thought this was just some slight shit. Like, whoever this dude is, he's serious business. So, like, now we're scared. But at the same time, we're like, yeah, like, like we got thousands of dollars. Like, if you do the math, mm-hmm. um, I think it's like 16 ounces to a pound. So you do 16 times five. That's 80 ounces that we had. Mm-hmm. And... All I know is that it was like forty, thirty thousand, forty, wow. some forty or thirty thousand dollars worth of money. Wow! Um, and I had a group of guys that I was cool with. It was very scary. It was very scary. Um, this guy, when she took his package, he was expecting to see it there. This dude broke into people's houses, had his gun, all of that stuff. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, bro. Yeah, it was it was really scary, bro. And he was trying to figure out like, what the hell? Where's my package at? And the craziest thing about it is the girl who brought it to me, she left them at her house. She was like, look, y'all can stay at my house um, and get the package and then y'all need to leave. I'm going to school. But thing is, she forgot something as she was going to school and ended up having to go back to her house. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I don't know where they went, but they went on a quick little trip or something like that. So when she came back to her crib, they weren't there and the package was right there. So they think that she went to school. Mm -hmm. They left. She comes back. The package is there. So she comes to us. So they ne- So they like, last thing that they knew, she went to school. Mm-hmm. So even though they pressing her out after all of this shit, she's like, listen, what the hell are y'all talking about? Last time I seen y'all, like she she played the role mm-hmm. very well. Wow. She's like, last time y'all seen me, I was going to school. So it was scary, but at the same time, we had a great story. Like she didn't, to them, she had went, she had went to school. Um, And now the, 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 the game plan was like, all right, we got all this shit. How do we distribute it without this guy knowing? You see what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. we we can have any type of prices that we want. It's like you getting uh forty three forty to fifty thousand dollars worth of shit for free. So I don't need to stretch it out. Like I could just sell it wholesale. I could just do whatever the hell that I want. Mm-hmm. Um. So we had to do that shit discreetly. Like where I was living at. Remember I told you that I had my own spot. I had to tell because we were so scared. I had to tell the people at my job. Mm-hmm. I mean the people at my crib. Yo, y'all leave the crib. Like. I don't know if this shit can get back to me. Like, I was already in it. Like, mm-hmm. it's too late now. We didn't already did it. She didn't already brought the shit to me. Yeah. And then what she said is, yeah, I just, I did it for y'all. Y'all just make sure y'all give me a percentage. We finessed her ass because she thought it was just a pound. She always always used to a pound. So when five came, we told her it was a pound. So it's like, we'll just give you $1,000. She didn't know we had thousands of dollars worth of shit. Mm-hmm. So we paid her a little $1,000 and we kept that shit discreet. Um, and, um... That is when I started learning lessons about life. Mm-hmm. With the crazy, the only reason that I'm telling this shit mm-hmm. is because that was when I really learned about what life was. So now we have all this product in front of us, right? Mm-hmm. And we all making money. Of course, I'm like the head guy because I'm the one that made it happen. I'm the one that's making the decisions. Mm-hmm. I'm sending people to different states to to get us money. But here's the thing. Mm-hmm. You think that people are part of your group and part of your clique. And then you start seeing that there's snakes, people trying to lying about it. You trying to look out for them. You giving out thousands of dollars, but you getting majority of the money and people upset with you and people are jealous of you. So now they're trying to skimp you. Now they're trying to lie. Now they're trying to like miss like you. I'm supposed to get this amount of money, but you're giving me this amount of money telling me bull crap. So I lost a lot of trust with a lot of those guys that I was cool with. I'm still cool with them and we're good to this day, but it showed me like no matter how successful, no matter how close you can be, jealousy, envy, and certain shit like that is really big, bro. It's really big and it's really like a thing. Um, I, I'm not I, I'm not gonna talk like I've been some big successful person, mm-hmm. but like when I was going through that, I was like the top dog. Like I was able to do whatever the fuck I wanted. I was spending thousands a day, I was spending hundreds a day, doing it all discreetly. Mm-hmm. And it was just people that are looking at me like, yo, like this guy's he's doing too good. Nobody ever ratted on me, mm-hmm. but at the same time, they was trying to take advantage of me. I had a guy that I tried to look out for. He took a whole pound from me and and, and went ghost. You're supposed to be my guy. we supposed to be getting money together, and then you go ghost. Come on, bro. So I learned a lot of lessons from there. Some of my best friends that I have that I try to look out for, we're not as close because of that situation. So while it was... um. 
while it was like a helpful, or I wouldn't even say helpful, while it was like a good moment in my life, it was, and, but it was bad things that I was doing, mm-hmm. I learned a lot from it. And I have relationships with people that are no longer the same because of literally that one situation. So what made you stop, though? Um, Because it was new. Mm-hmm. And I was doing it like rookie, but like you smart, so you're a businessman, so like we're going to do it the right way. Mm-hmm. And I just realized how much trouble it was bringing to my life. Like, you know, you see rich people all the time. They're rich, but they see, go through bull crap all the time. It, it's like that. I wasn't rich, but at the same time, at 18 or 20, I was like rich for real, for real. And I'm trying to get my other guys money, but I'm seeing that they trying to scam me. They trying to do all it. Like it was just a whole bunch of bull crap. I, friends that I have in Maryland that I grew up with, like, you know, they, they doing funny stuff. And it was just like, yo, like this shit is not worth it. Like I could have literally took that shit to a whole nother level, but I was just like, yo, I'm just going, you know, this is the first time. This is the only time I'm going to get the money and then I'm going to stop. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was like, you know, I'm going to go back into my government stuff, into my business stuff. And I just, all this money that I racked up, I'll keep it to the side and I'm done. Because mm-hmm. I didn't want to keep it going. If I would have kept it going, I'd probably still be doing it to this day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Was there a particular incident that, like, hit you hard and, like, hey, you, you thought about him, like, he did some self-reflection and, like, man, this thing might be going the wrong route. I got to stop it right now. Was there a particular incident? Yeah, it was that I was scared that I was going to get killed mm-hmm. because I had, ro- I had robbed the wrong dude. Mm-hmm. Like he was a guy that I don't really know too much about still, mm-hmm. but he was a guy that was not planned. So mm-hmm. it was just like, he was always getting shipments. If you getting shipments all the time and then just one of your shipments of five pounds, like you, you kind of like that guy in this area. And mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, if I ever get caught, like I'm a die, mm-hmm. like I'm going to fucking die. And, um, during that whole process of ev- getting everything out and taking care of the, the, the business, we were scared. My, 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 my homeboys were scared. Everybody that was around me was scared. I had to go to multiple different locations. I'm stashing money at, 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 at females' houses. Like, I'm thinking they may rob me. I'm paying people to, like, and then I'm just realizing, like, yo, I'm doing way too much. Like, I'm doing way too much. So I was like, when this shit is done, I'm done. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I just decided to be done with it. But clearly I wasn't done with it because after college, mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, I've experienced this. I know how to do it a more legit way. So mm-hmm. then when I was going through my trials and tribulations, I'm like, damn, I got to keep myself afloat. Mm-hmm. I don't want to rely on my mother, my grandmother. I don't want to ask people for money. I don't want to look like a bum. I don't want to do none of that. Like I had to get back into that shit just to keep myself afloat. I didn't have to do it. I look back at it like it's so many different things I could have did. But like I was young, like I needed money quick, fast then. So it's mm-hmm. like... That's what I resorted back to. And I just look back at it now like, dude, I took so many fucking risks Mm -hmm. with a master's, with, you know, with my grandmother, everything that I just now told you about in the intro Mm -hmm. to like, now look at what the hell I'm doing. Like, it it just, it just, those is the reason I stay out of that shit and I don't get into that. And I didn't get into that shit before. So why you got, when you got out of school and um, you said you started doing it again, was it a major incident that happened that made you just say that's it yeah the major incident was yeah i was making federal government money i was doing good with my money and then Mm -hmm. it's like i'm unemployed and i'm getting these temp jobs and i'm not i'm living a lifestyle because you know everybody knows me i like to go out uh i used to like to go out have fun spend money this and that but it's like i was living that type of life but it's like now i'm not getting the same income now i'm barely getting like 75 percent of the income so then it's like, now I'm still living the same type of lifestyle. And I'm looking in my pockets like, yo, what the hell? Like, I have $100 in my account. What the I used to never have less than like three or $4,000 in my account at all times. And then you tell me like, now I got 100 So um, because I was in school at the time getting my master's, I was getting like refund checks and shit. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to put this shit into, you know what? And until I get a job, that's what I'm going to do. Um, so, you know, it, it took some time. Like I'm, I, I've got my bachelor's and working on my master's. I'm getting refund checks, which is keeping me afloat so I can like get what I need so I can distribute. But it's like, now I'm living with my mom and I got to hide stuff. I got shit in jars. Like, I, I, like it was, it was crazy, bro. Living with your mom, living in a room, um, having pounds, 
having to seclude them, having to buy jars with the smell, having to make runs. You know, you leaving the house. So you're mm-hmm. like, what the hell you keep leaving the house for? Mm-hmm. Like, like, yo, it was just fucking crazy. Like, I can't make this shit up. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like, it was just a process that I went through. And I was like, as soon as I get the opportunity to be done with this shit, I was done, bro. So when did you get the opportunity? And when was the opportunity? When Amazon gave me the contract. Oh, wow. Yep. So how much Amazon saved you? Amazon saved me. Oh. That's why I try not to shit on them, and I try not to do talk too bad, even though they shit it on me. Mm-hmm. They changed my life because I was going down a path that was just not where I was supposed to be, and I was stuck in it. Because mm-hmm. now it's like, yo, you don't really have no real job. You got temp jobs. You're making a little bit of money, but like this this drug shit is really just keeping you afloat. Mm-hmm. So... um um, you know, I got the contract from Amazon. They put thirty four thousand dollars in a signing bonus. Mm-hmm. Um, they gave me stock and all of that stuff. And I and I remember the day I signed the contract, I cut off all my plugs. I was like, no, nah, I'm not getting anything from y'all no more. And I told all the people that was like buying from me and copying from me, I said, this is going to be my last time mm-hmm. that y'all see me. And I sold everything like for low because I didn't want, I, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about, oh, I can get this person for this price, this and that. No, no, I was just like, look, whatever you need, what's the price that you want? And I got rid of it. And I was done after that, bro. Mm-hmm. I was done after that. And, um, you know, the people that knew about what I was doing, I, I really appreciate them because they still commend me. And they was like, bro, like you were serious. Like, I'm like, yeah, I was, I wasn't doing that shit because I wanted to be cool because I wanted to do it. I just didn't want to have to rely on nobody. I didn't want to have to rely on my grandmother, my mother or none of that shit. I wanted to be self-independent. My grandmother raised me to be independent. Like, no. But the thing is, is that I ended up going into a path that I wasn't trying to. Mm-hmm. And luckily, because I'm, I, I think I'm smart, I, I did it a smart way, but it wasn't nothing that I wanted to do, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, I could have had a job. Like, I, I look back at it now. I could have the Amazon job or Target job and still be doing the same thing that I'm doing mm-hmm. and probably have way more money. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, that it's the risk. It's the mental. It's the, like, bro, you going about your life. You Like, your grandmother thinks that you're this, but you're really this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't want that on my conscience, bro. I didn't want that on my conscience. But I feel like I was at a point in time where I had to do what I had to do, bro. I had to do what I had to do. So is there any possibility that I can go back to that lifestyle? Hell no. 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 Uh, well, well, here's the thing. I wouldn't say that lifestyle. I mean, you know, there's businesses now. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I could create a business where I have a dispensary so that I'm doing it the legal way. You know, yeah. and, I mean, that could happen in the future. But nah, as far oh. as like the, 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 the being a real drug dealer, nah, it's no way that'll never happen again. I'm too, I, I've, I've, I've. I've got too far. Like I, I, I've, I've earned an, uh, enough of my stripes. I will never go back to that. Okay, coming now to Amazon. So you get to Amazon, and now you're a new guy, a new man, and you start making, let's just say, an average, average income. By uh, the time. I was making about when I first started. I was making like sixty-seven thousand. When I was with the federal government, I was making like forty-five thousand. Mm-hmm. So you think about it. I made sixty-seven thousand as salary. And then they gave me eighteen thousand. And then after you take the taxes, it was like fourteen thousand in bulk. So I made a good amount of money in that first year. I didn't need to sell drugs. I didn't need to do anything. Got me a new car. Got me a new crib. Uh, the girl that I was with, um, we ended up. Shout out to her. I don't want to say her name, mm-hmm. uh, but she, if she ever sees it, she'll know who it is. I appreciate her. I, I um, she was, yeah. I, <laughs> I know people are going to see this, so I'm not going to say too much, but. I appreciate her for supporting me. <laughs> I appreciate her for supporting me and uh, being my rock for real. Like she really mm-hmm. paused. Um, um, she really held me down. Um, mm-hmm. And I did some fucked up things, bro. Like I did some fucked up things. Um, yeah, some fucked up things. Uh, but I really do appreciate her. And I hope that she um, at least takes some type of like credit for like she helped me she helped develop who I was as a person. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, I was, I, I was in the money then. So, you know, I, I, I get left that shit alone. I wanted to go legit. I'm still legit. I don't do none of the bullshit no more. I don't live around where I used to. I don't be around Tacoma, DC like that. I don't go to none of that stuff no more. Like Amazon changed my life and, and, and it was a reality check. Um, so yeah, I appreciate them. So you get to Amazon. What was your, um, your goal when you got to Amazon? Um, my goal, I had, mm, I didn't really have no goals when I got to Amazon. I was just like, I'm happy that I'm doing things legit. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I, I'm like, I don't have to drive around to Montgomery County and all these places with pounds. I don't have to sneak around and do shit. It was just such a such a uh, a burden to my life. I'm like, I'm just going legit. Mm-hmm. So how long did it take you to become um from to get to live? Oh no no! How long did it take you to go from L- level four area manager to level five? I came in as a five. Oh, you because, came in as a five because of my background. Because I had my master's in the uh, and I work for the federal government. So mind you, while I'm telling you this whole story, I was working for the federal government and I had my master's. Mm-hmm. But it was just that I ain't have no job in front of me. I ain't had nothing that was supporting me where I can get out my mother's house and all of that shit. Like I didn't have none of that. Mm-hmm. So you came in as a five. Yes. And you were in, you worked for Amazon for how long? Fucking three years, bro. Three years. As a five, like I knew, like as a five, you could be a five for two years. Mm-hmm. But my thing is like once you go in approaching your third year, if you're still a five, it's like what the hell are you doing? Mm-hmm. And then I also knew at the same point, HR talked to me, was like, if you're a five for, for too long, at some point they're going to approach your managers like, why the hell should I promote them? Mm-hmm. Or she should be fired. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm sitting over here banking like, all right, cool. I've been a five for two years and some change, and then I get elevated to the stretch role where mm-hmm. I'm like, cool. But the thing is, is that there was people in there hating on me, bro. And then, and and this is what people don't understand if you're not a minority. Yeah, I was a top manager. I always was a top manager. Excuse me. Always was one of the most like managers, had great results. But the thing is, is that it's it's this, it's this. It's the earrings. You can't see my earrings. There's some people who think that, like, you're legit not ready for that role because mm-hmm. of the way you look. You display it. You, you're you trained for it. You do what everybody else does, but yet they don't want to sit over here and elevate you because they think what they think. And that's when I knew, and I, I still will vouch for Amazon, but I was just around the wrong people. I was around people who didn't want to see me succeed or used me and used my, my, my strengths and the skills that I brought to to big up them and disc- and discredit me. And I could go further into that, but mm-hmm. because I know certain people may watch it, I'm not going to talk too much into it, but mm-hmm. they know who they are. Mm-hmm. They know who they are. Mm-hmm. And that's why I left because I know who I am and I know that I can't work around those people knowing what they did to me and mm-hmm. knowing the, 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 the shit that they, they knew what I was trying to strive for mm-hmm. and they used that for their personal gain while trying to shit on me. And that's why I left. So um, what made you come to that conclusion that it's because of skin color, because you put on earrings? That's why, oh. Um, it was because I seen other people that didn't perform and didn't have, and it's not just about straight performance. They didn't have the leadership, didn't perform as good as I did, didn't have the relationships that I had. And these people, you know, the guys who, who, who determine if you'll get to that level, they're more attracted to them, they're more cool with them than a person who's actually doing this shit and is not asking for anything. I never wanted to be cool with the seniors or the GMs or anything. I just wanted to do my job at a high level and let them know I was doing it. Mm -hmm. They seen it, but they chose to look past that and look at other people who was not performing as well as me or didn't have the same leaderships as me. And for some reason, they were getting opportunities. And I had been seeing that but it's just like I try to beat the odds. I'm like I want to be the black guy with the dreads, the earrings, you know, who dress cool, um, you know, who the people like, and show that like other people can do this shit too. You can look like me or look crazy, crazy to me. You can do the same thing too if you're doing your job the right way. But it got to a point that I just realized I couldn't win. As much as I don't, I do not like losing. I do not like to quit. I do not give up. But it got to a point where it's like, bro, like, nah, bro, like. Now you're being taken advantage of. You shitting on yourself. I had to look at myself in the mirror like, bro, what are you doing? Like, you're not going to beat them mm-hmm. unless you are them. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take the other route. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to work for y'all. Y'all not going like undermine me. Y'all not going to use and abuse me. I was on three different shifts, front half, back half days, front half days, and RTN within six, eight months as a stretch ops. They sent me to Arizona to train where I'm with sevens and eights, or and I know more than them. But nobody, the, the people who could promote me, they don't want to look. They didn't want to look at that, and it took a manager. And I'm not going to say his name, but he knows who he is. If he's if he watches this, it mm-hmm. took him to be like, "Look, dude, I can't tell you what goes on." But he's like, "These people are not for you. You need to go somewhere else. You're too good. You're too great. You're too passionate. This this is not the spot. Rather go somewhere else or go to another company." And that's what I chose to do. So, what made you made? Um, when did you make the, that decision? Because you just left recently. 
Mm, two months ago. <laughs> two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> two months ago. Yeah, it was two months ago. Um, you know, my manager, people were telling me like, yo, they, they taking advantage of you. Like, bro, you're still stretching. You're basically like a six. You basically do everything that they do. You're in, like, they're taking it. I'm like, nah, you know, there's no opportunity right now. When opportunity comes, they'll get me. And what happened was, is that once the sixes, once they had six availabilities, mm-hmm. they promoted another guy an inbound, yeah, inbound, which he deserved it. He deserved it. He deserved it. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I will never hate. I'm not a hater. He deserved it. But I should have been in that same class with him. Mm-hmm. Like it should have been him and me. And we should have been shit. We talked about it. He even told me, he was like, yo, like they take it forever to promote me. And he's like, I feel you. He's like, because I'm an inbound. I, 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 I can chill. Like I'm just waiting for it to happen. Like my wife makes t- three times more money than I do. I can chill. My life is good. I started from here and I'm here. So I'm chilling. He's like, for you, I feel you. He's like, bro, you do so much, so much shit. And you, you flow ops and all that. He's like, I feel you. And then we had that conversation. And two months later, they promoted him, mm-hmm. which he should have got, mm-hmm. but they didn't want to promote me. What the fuck, bro? And then I find out the reason why is because a person that I helped, that I developed, that I changed her whole shift. Well, I think I just kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you shitted on me when you had the opportunity to uplift me? Nah, bro, I was done. I had to take off a week for that. Because I didn't want to go in there and do some crazy shit. Not no some crazy shit like physical, but like go off. Mm-hmm. They already thought Adric, he's again, black, dreads. So he he speaks too much. Uh sometimes he he lashes out. I didn't want to do that. So I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna take a week off and I'm exploring my options. Mm-hmm. And I got the opportunity to work for Target. Where they gave me seventeen, uh like seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars more. Mm-hmm. And it's just more opportunity. Wow. So um while you were going through let's just say the turmoil you're going through at Amazon. Mm-hmm. Did Target reach out to you or you, you reach out to them? Um, Target did reach out to me, but they needed good leaders and mm-hmm. somebody specifically reached out to me and was like, yo, I told you that they was going to try to take advantage of you. If you ever want to come here, let me know. Mm-hmm. I'll take care of you. And that person literally got me in there within three weeks and I got mm-hmm. the salary that I wanted. Oh, wow. That's good. So looking back now at Amazon, would you what would you tell the people who was watching right now saying, "Hey, Adric, I feel you." And Oh, a lot of people feel me. Uh I, I don't mean to cut you off. Mm-hmm. 75% of the people that work at Target are from Amazon because they all went through something similar. The mm-hmm. GM for Target was in Amazon and he left for the same exact reason. So, I'm not trying to shit on Amazon because they are a great company mm-hmm. and they 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 pay their people well. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the leadership and the development, they're just not there. They're they're so ahead of the game that they're focused on more so profit and volume mm-hmm. rather than their people. And that's why I got so many people right now at Amazon hitting me, trying to leave, trying mm-hmm. to come to Target. Um, if you want to work for Amazon, it's a great place to work for. Mm-hmm. But you got to find that right place where the people are actually for leadership and development. And the place that I was at was not for that. Everybody was for themselves, using and abusing so they could keep their jobs. So um, would you would you phrase it this way that um, when 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 there was, a, let's just assume there's a win, people always want to take the win. They were like, oh, I made this win happen. This, But when there's some, when something goes wrong, they're like, they start pushing the blame. Like, oh, yeah. no, nah, this person's fault. That person's fault. This person's fault. Yeah, Target is not like that. Um, Target, I mean, there is, there's always going to be that. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's always going to be that mm-hmm. everywhere. But in Amazon, because everything is so, uh, like, everything is so microscopic, everything is so, like, we need you to do this. Like, we're watching you. Um a lot of that shit happens there. With Target, it's like, like I told you, it's in the development stage. It's like a newborn baby mm-hmm. and it's just growing. So it's like, you're not going to punish a baby for making mistakes or not doing the right things mm-hmm. because it's new to it. Everybody's new. The gym is new. The seniors are new. Everybody's new. Mm-hmm. Like Target is not a new company, but like I said, the food distribution and mm-hmm. the manual part where like they actually are hiring as uh, 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 people, human beings, that part is new. Mm-hmm. So everything that Upper Marlboro is doing is new mm-hmm. and everybody's learning together. So it's not really no specific blame. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So what are your um, your career objecti- objectives or goals right now? Um, I said that I want to be a GM 
Mm-hmm. So that means I want to run a whole building. Mm-hmm. And I know that the 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 money that comes with that and then the, the capital that comes with that, I know that I'll be able to uh, explore out. Like I, I it's going to sound crazy, but I want to be like a, a I want to do something like Ghost from Power. Like I want to have my own club. Mm-hmm. I want I have a lot of good friends. I have a lot of DJs. Like I said, I'm to myself, but at the same time, I have a lot of networking people everywhere because I went to Hampton. Mm-hmm. I want to like build something where I like have a a club that I own mm-hmm. and it expands. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it all started from me being a GM or that 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 guy that owns a building. Mm-hmm. Um, rather if it's Target or whatever, like who's to say I, I may not be working at Target. I may go back to Amazon. I don't know. But the thing is that I want to keep building, keep building my capital to where I can invest in something else and something that I love. I love, um, I don't really love the club life, but I like what it brings and, mm-hmm. and, and, and the attraction. Like you got a good club, that shit going to be popping. You going to have celebrities coming there. You know, mm-hmm. you going to have people on people, they get they, a big check or something. They want to spend it. Like I want to do something like that mm-hmm. and expand off of that. So that's like my ultimate goal for real. I don't care if I'm like rich or celebrity, but I want to be wealthy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what's the, your greatest life lessons you've learned? The first one is, is that the, f- the first one is, is that like, no matter how close you may be with somebody, mm-hmm. envy can always be a possibility. I'm not going to say if you're successful or if like you're in a group where you're doing really good, everybody won't be supportive of you. But a lot of times when you're successful, there are people that wish that they were where you're at mm-hmm. secretly mm-hmm. and they might be in front of you like, oh, yeah, good for you, Adric. Mm-hmm. But on the low, they're like hating on you. Mm-hmm. And that's just something that I had to experience that I never thought because, you know, I got, you know, I'm such a neutral guy when it comes to like my relationships with friends. Like I don't indulge too much in their business. I don't, I, I, I'm just like, hey, I'm your, I'm your friend. I'm your best friend. I'll be here to support you. You know, I want to see you grow. But then not everybody's like that. Like, mm-hmm. There's people right now who are in circles where, you know, you're doing successful, but the people that's in your circle, they're hating on you, bro. They're hating on you. They're wishing on your downfall. They're wishing that, like, they're they're coming up with reasons that they could try to fuck up what you are doing well. Mm -hmm. But they're supposed to be your best friend. They're supposed to be your good friend. Like, that's the first thing that I learned. The second thing that I learned is that, like, when you are in a job, you need to give, you need to keep receipts, bro. Like you need to keep receipts. Like I, I, I there's a lot of people that I could. <laughs> what's funny? What's funny? Keeping receipts, bro. <laughs> keep the receipts, bro. Keep the receipts, bro. Because there's motherfuckers that I could end right now in Am- in Hampton that did me wrong, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not that type of person, even though I know what they did to me. But at the same time, I wish I would have kept receipts to show. When it came to that time, like, how the hell are y'all not promote me? Like, this is what I've done. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in it. I'm, I'm doing it. So I'm just thinking that it's being seen. But mm-hmm. by certain people, it's not being seen. And the people that should show it to those people, they're not even doing that shit. So keep the receipts. And uh, the third thing that I would say is, like, man... Just do what you got to do and stay out the way. Mm-hmm. I know that that's a thing that's, that's said around the guys that I grew up with, but you just got to stay out the way, man. Mm-hmm. Like, the reason I say that is because, and and rest in peace to my brothers, um, my brother Rail and Los, um, you know, they were great guys, guys that will, that will vouch for you, that will protect you, that will do anything to, to make sure you were okay. But those were people that I learned that like I'm 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 on my way. I'm I'm going this way, mm-hmm. but I'm hanging around certain guys that like it may not be in the best interest for me. I love these guys. I would almost die for these guys, but at the same time, I know that I'm putting myself at risk of dying or getting in big trouble and everything that I worked for could possibly be gone in a second because I'm just always with them. Mm-hmm. You know, like I was always with them. Like, not just every now and then. I was always with them. And, um, you know, tragedy happened to both of those guys. And I still got, um, 
right here, my guy Los, I, I still got, I, I have, since he died, I have not taken this off. Um, that was my brother. Um, but, you know, at some point I realized that, like, the shit that we're doing, like, me being in this position, and I'm always with you, and we going through these, about to be a fight, about to get jumped, always spazzing out, like, I had to get away from that. So it's like, that's why I moved to where I moved at. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't have to worry about that no more. I'm not that close to D.C. and, and, and Montgomery, um, Tacoma Park and Silver Spring. Like, I'm in a spot where, like, you know, it's, it's on the up. Like, like everybody that I'm around is rather millionaires or 100,000 heirs and stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. I'm there. I stay out the way. I don't go out like that no more. Like, mm -hmm. I just hang out with some of my best friends. Rather, it's, well, rather if it's at a crib or we go somewhere in a party or something like that. And that's it, bro. Like, I stay out the way. I'm not trying to... You know, like I said, because there's a lot of people that I know that they tell me that they're happy for me. But if they was to ever see me, they might put me in a fucked up situation or they might try to fuck me up personally. And like, I'm not talking about fight. I'm talking about like fuck up my success. And I'm not letting that happen, bro. Oh, OK. So what if someone is going through, let's just assume, person is working for a company now. I don't, I don't know what the company person is working for. And it's going through let's just, the similar situation or similar challenge you, you um, encounter at Amazon, and he's saying, oh, Edric, I heard your story, and I'm kind of um, this intrigued by what you did and how you handled it. So what advice or what um, this thing, um, suggestion are you going to give me to take, or what advice are you going to tell me to take at this moment in my career to move forward to the next level? Are you going to tell me to just stay and just relax or just keep my options up and look for somewhere else? I would say... Cause I'm still going through it myself, mm -hmm. but I would say based off of what I learned, mm -hmm. what I use to try to bring my success is that I always look back at where I started from, bro. Mm -hmm. Like you got to look at where you started from. Like a lot of people was like, oh, you were privileged. You was raised by your grandmother, this and that, that, that. They don't really know what the hell I was going through, bro. Like, yeah, I was raised by my grandparents who had a decent foundation, but you don't know the other side of everything. Like you don't know that like my mother was struggling. Like my mother always had to you know, I always had to look at my mother was never really good with money. So I'm always every time I'm thinking that I'm in the good and my money's good. I'm like, yo, I got to dish out this money like, oh, like I need to I need to be at this spot. And when I was first like at the bottom. It's like I that's why I didn't keep going with the drugs and shit. That's why I didn't keep going with all that other bullshit that I was doing. That's why I moved away from the shit, because I'm like, yo, I didn't got too far. You got to look at where you're at and where you're trying to get. And you got to let that motivate you to get where you're trying to go. Mm -hmm. Like, you got to look at where you was at originally, where you was uncomfortable, where you was like, yo, like, I'm I'm depressed or whatever you're going through. And you got to be like, yo, what is best for me? And that's why that situation with the Amazon thing, and that's why I was like, yo, even though Amazon is, is treating me pretty well and I'm making good money, there's no where I'm at. This spot in Amazon, it, 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 it's not... It's not a uh, positive for me. It, it's not going to take me anywhere. It is it, is is only going to keep stretch. It, my morale was going down, so it's only going to take me to a spot where I end up uh, uh, self destructing. Mm -hmm. So it's like you got to look at where you were and keep that to motivating you to where you need to be. Rather, that's rather you need to have a conversation with a person um, and see like, hey, how do they really feel about you? Like, hey, I'm not really progressing. I'm not really getting any development. Like, what's really going on? You need to talk. You need to figure out what's going on. Don't get mad at it. Don't 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 take it personal, which I did. But at the same time, you got to remember, like, all right, damn, like, I was doing so well, and now I don't like working here no more. Like, now I feel like I'm being held back. Like, I don't want to self-destruct. I need to go. I need to do something. I need to look in the mirror and be like, what do you really need to do? Do what you really need to do to get where you need where you need to go. That's what my mother has always told me. Like I said, I don't never want to discredit my mother. My grandmother raised me, but my mother gave me a lot of uh, these words. Where it's like I still go back to this day, mm -hmm. and and that's helped me out. Like like don't let nobody fucking hold you back, and don't think that you can just you're good enough where you can just defeat the odds. You're great, you're good, but sometimes you're just in situations where it just won't work out for you. And you got to realize that, and you got to do what's best for you branch out there's a lot of people that's going through that shit right now in hampton that's why they're hitting me up because they're like yo i have all this potential the pe these people are telling me all these good things but i'm not seeing the, the 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 fruits of the labor for it so 
You got to do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Where was you at right here before you got there? Now you you was going like this, and now you're going like this, and now like your morale is going to take you like this. No, stop. Look where you at. Figure it out and find a way to go like this. Oh, got you, man. So what leadership style do you think is the most, do you believe is the most effective? Transparency. Transparency. Mm-hmm. I was successful in Amazon and like life, friendship and all of that um, because of transparency. Like Mm -hmm. I'm a Pisces, so I'm emotional, not as emotional as I used to be, but like transparency. As long as you are transparent where a person knows how you feel, where you're coming from, how you are as a person, then it, it, is no way that you can kind of like be fake. There's no way that you can kind of be like a bullshitter. I've never been a bullshitter. I've never been fake. I've never led somebody on where they thought that I was this person and I'm this other person. Now, when it comes to females and shit like that, and I'll bring that up like, yeah, that shit can happen sometimes. You know, you meet a girl and, you know, y'all are in the beginning phase and, you know, she thinks you're the greatest guy and then she gets to know you and you get to know her. And it's not just for me, it's for other females too. Like, <laughs> nigga, I thought you was, I thought you was this. And then, you know, now you're getting comfortable. Now I'm really seeing your, your, your real colors. And the same thing can happen for, like, I'm not talking about females. I'm talking about like me. I'm talking about everybody. Like transparency is something that's very great. It helped me out in, 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 in when I was a manager because everybody knew what was expected of me. People knew my weaknesses. People knew who I was. And, you know, they never took me for fake, so they never wanted to betray me. They never wanted to be like, oh, you know, I want to see something bad happen to this guy. But the craziest part of it, and then we're talking about leadership and, and like, manager-wise. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to friends and stuff like that, they see your strengths and, and your weaknesses because you're so transparent, mm-hmm. and they will try to take advantage of that shit. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to a job, it's like, I'm coming in here to do a job, you know? Like, I'm being transparent with you. Look, you cool and all of that. I appreciate you, but look, you be fucking up. Like, I'm just going to be 100 with you. Like, I don't want to see you get fired. But you need to you need to fix this shit, and mm-hmm. people appreciate that. People mm-hmm. will 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 uh, maneuver to you or, or or gravitate to you because you have those type of leadership styles, rather than you just being that manager coming in like, hey, how you doing? Mm-hmm. And oh yeah, you're good. This and that. Da, da. And next thing you know, you're firing them for some bullshit. And they're like, mm-hmm. yo, I thought he was the greatest manager ever, and he just fired me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've had to fire people, but they fired themselves. I let them know, look, this is what's going on. These people are watching you. This and that is going on. That's transparency. Like, I don't have to tell you that. Like, I'm a manager. I don't have to tell you that. Mm -hmm. But I do do it. So if you get fired, that's your fault. And that's why I've never had no bad relationships with people that I managed. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, there's probably, there's a couple, but that's something different. But like, yeah, for the most part, transparency. And that's how I got the Target job. They asked me, what is your greatest uh, strength. I said transparency, so because I earn trust. People trust me. People tell me things that they would never tell anybody else. People disclose things with me that they don't even disclose with their families or their or, the, or their significant others because they know I'm gonna just listen to you. If you need advice from me, I'll give you the advice. If you just need a person to hear what you got to say, I'll be that. But transparency is the number one, bro. Transparency, I think, is the number one in life. But at the same time, sometimes it can bring envious and negativity to you or i wouldn't even say envious like i don't want to talk like people envying me Mm -hmm. but it's just like when you're successful and people feel like they didn't go the same route as you or you had it easy no matter how transparent and genuine you are it's it it doesn't matter bro they're Mm -hmm. they're gonna find some way to try to be negative in your life bro yeah i like i like your listen your take on transparency because i believe transparency is really the key and sometimes people are going to say one thing, promise something else, and do another thing. And All you, the time. And you don't really know who you're talking to. You never. You but, never do. But when someone knows you're a transparent person, they're like, oh, they know what to expect. And they know that, hey, if I come to this person, I know that this who he is or this what this what this person is all about. And you don't think, oh, maybe he might be this today, he might be this that tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow he's right. something else. Right. So when you're transparent, at least you're valuable. So are you valuable? Yeah. Not even sometimes, yeah. but you're valuable. 
But if you're not transparent, sometimes people are going to take you for granted. Most yeah. of the times. Yeah. And sometimes you might be transparent and the people who don't who envy you take you for granted still. So you sometimes in life you never win. Exactly. It's you just, never win. Yeah. Perfect way. I was just about to say, look, yeah. transparency, even I'm talking about it, like you said, people take you for granted. granted. And that's yeah. what happened when you, happened with me for Amazon. Oh, we need you to fix this. We need you to I need this done and this and that time. Da da da. And you do it and then it's like, all right, cool, like Look, I just accomplished this, like, yeah, and then he's like, no, we need we need this done. We need more of this done. And I'm just like, all right, bro, like, I get it, and I'm going to keep supporting, but, like, when are y'all going to start supporting me, bro? When? And it just, when? Like, when to the end? Like, like, and I'm not talking about W-I-N. I'm talking about when uh-huh. to a certain end, bro. And sometimes that shit just don't be what you think it's going to be, bro. It just don't be. Yeah, you're right. We're wrapping up now. I just want to get your take. Um, what are some of the core values you always try you try to instill in your team? Um, accountability. Mm-hmm. Accountability. I tell everybody, like, listen, I will be the best manager you'll ever have as long as everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm big on, I don't want to see these people working real hard and these people not doing shit. So what's going to happen is, is that these people are going to see that you're not holding these people accountable mm-hmm. and then that's going to cause them to start going like this. Mm-hmm. So it's like if it requires firing somebody or if it requires having to to be a disciplinarian, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, these people are going to respect you. These people here are going to respect you because they're like, yo, this guy's talking to me. Tra- he's been transparent with me. He's given me opportunities and mm-hmm. I'm gone. And these people are going to look at you like, yo, Adric, he may not be perfect, but one thing he does do, he holds people accountable. He's mm-hmm. not going to watch us work hard and watch all these other people bullshit. Like, he's going to hold everybody accountable. And, uh, you know, that's what it is. That's what I did at Amazon. Mm-hmm. And that's what I do to this. If, if, if you're doing a great job, I'm, a, I'm, I'm your number one supporter. You want to go here? You want to go there? I'm going to do my best to try to get you where you need to get. I've had multiple people that I've had promoted or I've, I've had them in leadership roles. I put them in spots that they wanted to be because they display that. And other people will see it. And then they come like, yo, they, they might have been here, but they see what I'm doing for these people here. And now you got certain people here. You're always going to have your bad people, or you, you know, your, your, your people that just don't give a fuck mm-hmm. doing that you know gonna be upset like oh he, he don't do shit he, he you know he, he show favoritism no nah, i'm not showing favoritism like you started off here and i gave i told you if you improve this is where you could go you chose not to do that mm-hmm. and now you're still going the opposite way so now you're the opposite way of the fucking organization mm-hmm. now you got to find another job i don't like firing people it's too much is it's too much it's mm-hmm. too much paperwork None of that. I don't want to see somebody lose their job. They got kids or none of that. But the thing is, is that like I'm not about to sit over here and jeopardize my job because I'm not holding motherfuckers account accountable. Like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. Like, and that was big to my success. So, you know, accountability, 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 bro. Like, if you have accountability for yourself and for your team, you'll be fine in management. I started off in management and I had not like my Amazon job, that was my first time being a manager. Mm-hmm. I learned a lot about myself. I grew as a person, I grew as a manager, I grew as a leader, I grew in multiple ways because, you know, I had to realize it's about accountability and transparency. Like, things that I learned from outside of my job to inside my job, like, yeah, bro, those 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 are some of the main things. There's other things, but that's just what worked for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a cool dude. Like, I, I can almost be, I, I'm like one of them. Like, I always tell them, like, I, look, I'm your manager, but I'm just like, yeah, we, we're a team. We're a team goal. The only time I'm going to put on that manager hat is if you're fucking up. Mm-hmm. Other than that, then you cool. Do what you got to do. Like, if you if you running up the numbers, you're doing great, and you want to take a break or something like that, you tell me you need to take a break. Bro, take that break. You work hard enough, bro. You're good. <laughs> but then you got a bullshitter who's sitting over here always trying to finagle, always trying to finesse. Oh, yeah, this is not that I'm... Well, damn, how many times your baby mother then got them... Then, then, then took the kids. Like, I mean, I'm saying that could happen, but like, how many times you done ran out of gas? How many times your, your tire got flat? Come on, bro. Like, nah, bro. Like, nah, we're not doing that over here. Okay. I want to ask you the last question that yeah. we're done for today. So, then yeah, we done already? We don't got no more time? It's like, nah, I'm joking. <laughs> What's up? Uh, okay. So, what if someone is watching this podcast or listening to this podcast episode today and is saying, oh, Edric, I'm getting some of your, um, some of your take and I'm kind of inspired? But right now, I'm kind of doing some drugs, selling some drugs on the side, and I'm making more, a lot of money. 
and I don't want. I think it's a it's a really good option for me right now because of my financial situation. I've tried to get a job several times, and I can't. I'm. Uh, it's on. It's so difficult for me to get a job, and I've tried several jobs, and sometimes I get a job, but they don't really pay good. And making this kind of money, I don't know if I want to stop doing this business, or probably maybe I should just take the job that's paying less and then grow from there. What are you going to tell me to do? All right, so <laughs> I appreciate you asking me that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to give my advice from my experience. So yeah. I just want people to know I wasn't no crazy high-class drug dealer. I probably only did it for two years in college and two years outside of college. But so it's not like I've been – I was doing that shit. Like I'm not an expert. Like mm -hmm. I was just a person that – got lucky and went about it smart and, you know, kind of benefited from it until uh -huh. I got the opportunity to get out of it. Mm -hmm. What I would tell them is, is that take all that money that you're getting, mm -hmm. put it to the side mm -hmm. and start from the ground up. I mean, even if you have to, because the thing is, is that no matter what you have opportunity to grow, if you have the drive to get better and to try to grow, it'll happen. And then the thing is, is that because you were so successful in your drug and all, all that bullshit, like, Put that shit to the side. That'll be your uh your your what they call it, your security blanket. That'll be like, you know, if you ever get in a bind, mm -hmm. you know, you got that money that you can help, you know, support you, keep you afloat. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't stay in it. Like, there's people that stay in this shit that lived off of it. That's cool. That wasn't my goal. Like, that was not what I wanted to do. So if it's like you're in a situation where you're like, damn, like drug dealing and all that stuff is what's keeping me afloat. Find somewhere that you can go, start from the bottom or start wherever you can get in that drive that got you to getting all that money that you got from, from the drugs and all that stuff. Transfer that energy into the job. It'll happen. Mm -hmm. You'll have those opportunities. They'll see your drive because it's like you're a hustler out in the streets. Be a hustler in a fucking job industry. Yeah. And the thing is, is that you made so much money, 20, 30, 40, whatever thousand, put that shit in the cut. So it's like, you know, you got this money in the cut and you make it in a certain amount of money. But look, that'll support you until you get to where you got to go. There's no way motherfuckers who really got to drive should be like, oh, I work for this company and I just want to be here. No, mm -hmm. no, no, no. If you're if you it, it's like a it's like a. um. It's like a dummy company. Like, if you want to do that, that's fine. You're selling drugs and all that shit. You got this regular-ass job, but you, your, your, your finances, the shit that you make is way above your what is shown on paper, then, yeah, you can do that. That's a dummy, comp dummy company. But if you're trying to, like, be legit, yeah, find an opportunity, get into that industry, get into that whatever it is, and stop what you're doing and just try to build yourself. That same drive that you had over here, let it boost you, and then what, whatever happens from there is just sky's the limit. Like, you you still got your money that you're sitting on, and you're still elevating yourself to the point where now you don't need this money anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's all I can really tell you. Man, interesting take. I like your take, though. It's really good. You gotta <laughs> <laughs> Because it's really hard to survive in the street. Bro. So if you take that drive off the street to the regular, like... Man, what? <laughs> Man, what? I, look, here's the thing. I didn't know... I didn't know I had that drive in the, that's what I'm saying. I didn't know I had that drive in me until I was like, damn, like, bro, like, I'm not making money. I don't have no job, so I have to figure some shit out. And then I realized the drive that I had that elevated me in the drug bullshit. And then I'm like, yo, I could take it somewhere else. And then I took it to Amazon. And then I started seeing myself go like this, like this, like this. And I started seeing my life change. And I started seeing people like, yo, you on your shit. Like, and now I'm like, bro, like, there's people watching me, this and that, blah, 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 like, like, I went to college, there's people successful, they don't even know what I've been through, like, yo, like, I, I'm trying to get, like, where they're at, or I'm trying to be a role model for the other people who's watching me, but I can't just be doing this bullshit, like, I gotta take the drive that I had to just scrum out of nowhere to to keep me afloat, and I'm gonna take it to something where it's legit, and just keep it going from there. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, it's, it's been a great episode. First of all, I want to thank you for coming today. <laughs> thank you, bro. <laughs> thank you for coming today. I know this one is going to be a cracker. <laughs> I, hope, I hope, this, I hope, I hope, I hope. There you have it, guys. Um, before we go today, I want to take a moment again to just me wish you guys a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Green, a, red, somehow. I don't know why. And a prosperous New Year in advance. So, hey, guys, this is one of, those, this is one of the episodes that you have to, you have to, 
share, 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 share. Make sure you're liking the video, you subscribe to our channel, and you're reaching out to your loved ones and telling them, hey, Ben Rollins Blueprint is a cracker. Ben Rollins Blueprint is the yes, best. Sir. So let's just share this, grow the community together. Be safe, enjoy your day, enjoy your, your holiday with your family. Thank you very much. Ben Rollins Blueprint. Appreciate you, man. Come Appreciate show, you. Man. For nothing, man. Thank you for coming.